Hello, and welcome to the Light Institute Sunday Meditation in Galisteo, New Mexico. There's a way that we do these meditations uh, together by breaking them into three parts so that different elements of our consciousness can be activated, stimulated, and bringing to the fore. The very first part is when we ask our higher selves. Your higher self is your own inner voice. It's the intuitive essence of your soul. We ask it to take form, we ask it to touch our bodies, and we draw it into our bodies. And this is a wonderful way to sit in meditation because it allows for all of the chatter to fall away so that you really are your true self. As we get ready to sit with our higher selves, I'll make an OM sound and that will cue you to press the button on your machine so that you can pause it and sit in meditation for as long as you choose. The second part of the meditation, we imagine that we're reaching up into the cosmos and pulling down a beam of beautiful white light through the top of the head and down into the stomach, into the solar plexus. This is the center of our emotional body. So when we pull that white light in, it really quickens us and frees us, and then we extend that light out from the solar plexus, radiate it out. I like to imagine that I'm sending it across the planet and then back up into the sky. And so we'll just bring the white light down and extend it out and sit meditation, allowing for that flow to flow through you and out from you. That expands your presence in the world and activates a sense of purpose as your energy moves out into the world. Another little OM. And in the third part of the meditation, each week we pick a situation or, or some theme uh, to focus on that allows us again to, to give our energy into the world. And I think at this moment, since there is light that is coming in in terms of uplifting ourselves from this world pandemic, let us send healing energy to the whole of humanity and feel as if and when you send that energy, that people remember that they can heal themselves. You're going to hear a few little sounds here during this meditation. This is a little wonderful, magical four-legged that is visiting me. So let's begin. We'll begin with our breath, because when you exhale, it causes your parasympathetic nervous system to be activated, and that pulls your brain down into alpha, into a meditative state. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply in through your nose. And exhale very slowly through your mouth. And inhale again through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Now ask your higher self, your own inner voice, the intuitive essence of your soul to take a form for you, any form. It could be a light, a being, a tree, an animal, even an equation. Just ask it to take form now. And ask your higher self to touch your body where you hold that intuitive essence of your soul, where you hold that divine source within you. And just imagine that your higher self is touching, activating one place in your body. It carries that divine essence. And then just begin to breathe in and out through that point in your body allowing that divine source to move within you. And now draw your higher self into your body and imagine that you are sitting with your higher self in meditation. Om. Take a deep breath into your body 
and reach up in your consciousness into the cosmos and pull down a beautiful beam of white light down through the sky, down through the top of your head, down into your stomach, your solar plexus, and from there laser it out from you across the planet and back up into the sky. And just continue that. You can breathe in as you pull it down and exhale as you extend it out. And just allow that to continue to flow through you and from you, that beautiful beam of white light. We call this practicing the art of radiance. We are radiant light beings, each and all of us. Take a deep breath into your body and feel the healing energy that's within you. You may feel it in your hands or your eyes or your face or your heart. Just ask your body where it is holding that beautiful loving, healing energy within you at this moment. And then bring your conscious awareness into that place in your body and just breathe in and out and just imagine that you're expanding it so that it fills you, so that you yourself are healing at this moment on all levels of your being, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Now bring into your mind's eye all of humanity, seven point something billion beings, souls. Imagine this mass of humanity. And then just breathe deeply and release that healing energy from you. And direct it to all of humanity so that Each being on this planet receives healing energy that corresponds to what needs to come into balance, what needs to be healed, what needs to be utilized in them at this moment. Just feel that energy because the healing energy within you comes from your source, it comes from the cosmos. It's infinite. Just feel the joy of extending it out to everyone. There may be certain people or groups of people that come into your consciousness that need your healing and direct that energy to them. And feel that as if that energy as it enters them creates within them that chain reaction that they recognize inside themselves that they can heal and that they then extend healing energy to all of those that they love and especially all of those that we don't love. Send the healing energy now. breath into your body and open your eyes. You know, when we give to the world, it brings us a sense of peace. Do you feel that now? It brings us a place where we belong, a purpose that we were born to. We have a second part of this meditation. It's called knowings. And in knowings, We receive questions from around the world each week and we discuss them in the knowings in order to uplift or illuminate us all. And so we'll see what we have this week. Allison will bring us the questions. The first question is from Puerto Rico. Dearest Chris, as an ICU nurse, I am hardwired to avert death. And when a patient dies, I implode emotionally. 
I would love to be able to see death in a different light. Is there some way to transform my consciousness around death from tragedy to the ability to embrace it? Hmm. What a powerful conversation is that. First of all, let me honor you that you have the strength and the courage to be there, to help people, to uh, do everything that can be done, uh, to help them to choose to pass from their bodies or to live because it's hard for us to recognize this, especially in the healing profession, that they're the ones that are choosing from a soul level. And uh, so the first thing that I would say to you to shift your consciousness from that imploding emotional uh, distraught energy that you couldn't save them or that the sorrow of their family is that these, these uh, dressings, these, these bodies that we carry uh, are only uh, temporary. Uh, we do, we do go on. The soul passes from one to another to another. Male bodies, female bodies, uh, different races, different time zones, and so uh, death is an ending, and very often it's a gift. And you must see that the people that are hurting or suffering, and to hold in your consciousness that it is a gift that they are free. But what will help you to be able to do that is to recognize that their soul does not die. And perhaps if you have been, as I have been, with many people at the moment of their death, you may have noticed them um, beginning to speak to or having a sense that somebody has come to them. Maybe they feel it's an angel. Or more often, they call out the names of people who have passed before them, parents and partners, children, I've seen this many times, and we may not understand that, but I know for sure that not always, and it's not necessary, but sometimes people even come for them to carry them into the light. And so we cannot see the purpose of their life, or the fulfillment of the purpose of their lives, uh, or the passage in terms of what they are doing with that passage. But it is a graduation. It is a freedom for them. The family and ourselves who must stay are the ones who feel the loss, who feel the, the grieving. But it's important to know that part of that grieving is for ourselves, that something has changed in our lives and we can't get it back. And this is true for you and I see that so many people are leaving and it is not about you. It's about their choice from the level of the soul. And they, they will go into a place of beauty, of rest, of love. And so what will help you to change from that terrible emotion is to honor that they have become free and that they go to the next part of what they're evolving as the soul evolves. Uh, and that this is a gift that they choose. And so it's very important, I would say, that uh, something that I was taught was that when a person dies, as you know, right after they die and the eyes stare, and if you notice, maybe you have, there is a sense of a change of energy as the soul leaves. Now there's, there's actually uh, an explosion of light when the soul leaves. And so one of the things that I was taught was to, when a person dies, instead of a feeling that that uh, terrible anguish to immediately imagine as we were doing a moment ago in our meditation that you are bringing a beautiful beam of white light down through the top of your head and extending it out from you and as you extend it out from you imagine that it spreads out like a beautiful moving avenue of white light and offer them to get onto that avenue so that you're actually helping them to move from the astral uh, that sort of finishing off stage. So sometimes people, um, their spirit uh, doesn't even realize that they're, they're free of their body. But when you create that avenue of white light and, and place it there and say, get on this avenue, go home. And what I always say is, go home to those that love you, that await you. And their spirits go very, very quickly. Uh, because the people who are waiting for them, because there's no time or space in the in the infinite cosmos, 
Um, maybe people from other lifetimes, people that were very important to them that, they, that they've even forgotten about, or there may be people that are close to them. But I always give them that point of reference that you're not just going off into nothing, but go home to those that love you. It makes it very easy for them to sort of gather that spirit-soul energy and travel on. And so I hope that that will help you to know that you have something that you can do in your consciousness. Create that avenue of white light. Send that, that spirit and that soul um, on to their next adventure. And you will find that as you do that and you sense that that, that has happened, you will be peaceful because it's never ours. No matter how much we know about healing or how much we want people to live, um, people who might even want to live uh, in their conscious awareness, but their soul has something else planned for them, which is greater, which is better, and which is uh, the source from which they've come. So the more that you train yourself to focus on that, the more released you'll be, because it's very important for you not to be stressed. We need you, and we need you to find the joy in, in the choice of a soul, not our choice, their soul, their choice. Great love to you and my deepest admiration and energy to support you. Allison. The next question is from Geneva, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Dear Chris, I've been reading reports about a decline in the mental health of children during the pandemic. Will you please tell us how to help our children be emotionally secure, especially during traumatic experiences? Mm. Oh, thank you. Uh, we have statistics about that here in the United States and actually everywhere in the world that we're seeing uh, children of all ages, from very small children to, to older children uh, who are having uh, quite a bit of struggle with what's going on on the planet. And so the first thing that I would say is that it's very important that you realize that these children are still very psychically open. Certainly until the age of seven, They're, they go in and out of their own bodies. Uh, they can feel your energies because they felt them in the womb. And so um, they're picking up, every time you listen to the news or comment on the news, they pick up the frequencies that are coming from you. So the first thing that you can do as teachers or parents or, or family is to uh, really get to a place where you can let go of your own fear and anxiety about what's happening in this world. And how do you do that? By finding that your higher self is supporting you and that it's important for you to know that you're not an accident here at this time. You have come because you have incarnated many times and you have the power to support the changes that are happening on the planet at this time. And so if you could be in a place where so many people say, well, what can I do? There's nothing that I can do. No, there's everything that you can do. That's why you're here. You can use the power of consciousness to send light, uh, to calm uh, the earth, to calm the people, to heal them, to uh, neutralize the viruses. There's so many ways uh, that you can work with that. And I've put out a lot of um, very short videos on my YouTube channel that will give you exercises in consciousness and techniques to work in that way. So you want to free yourself from that anxiety that your children are picking up. The next thing that I would say is kind of twofold, and that is that you can enter into the consciousness of your children, to the emotions of your children, and help to stabilize them by using light. Everything is made of light. We all respond to light. Uh, it doesn't matter what culture we're in, or race, or place uh, we're in, we respond to green uh, emotionally. We respond to blue, we respond to red, we respond to light in very specific and inclusive human ways. So um, one of the things that you can do is to, when you see something terrible that's going on in the planet, hold it in your mind's eye for a moment and ask what color it needs, or they, if they're people, from you to have that opportunity, that potential to, to put, move through that. 
And then imagine, as we were doing in meditation, to draw that color from the cosmos down to the top of your head and extend it out through your solar plexus to them. Again, you will find that that relaxes you and will allow you to laugh. Sometimes we feel that if there's so much tragedy and pain and sorrow going on in the world that we don't have the right to be happy. It's the reverse. The more that you will access your happiness, the more that will radiate from you and, and help to release the sorrow and the fear of others. If your children already know their colors, you can teach this exercise to them. When I had a Nijoni school, and I had uh, children as young as three, and, and then up through adults, teenagers, one of the things that we always did was we would look at, just as we did a little while ago, look at a situation or maybe with a small child because they know if Papa is nervous or Mama is angry or somebody's depressed, they know that. But they don't have the words to, to communicate or even talk about it. But one of the things that I would do is say, uh, let's see, to whom should we send light today? And someone would say, my Papa. Good, let's send light to your papa. Let's send light to all the papas. To each one of you, to your papas. And then I said, close your eyes for a moment. Now imagine your papa in front of you and ask what color he needs from you to be happy today or healthy. And then again, the color that pops into their mind, you ask them to say it out loud and then reach up and pull down that color down into their stomach and laser it out. Children, when they become depressed or, or mentally imbalanced, they suffer tummy aches. And so just by doing, sending these lights to the stomach, uh, we are helping them to release that. It's also very important to realize that uh, you want to watch uh, your child's intestines. Um, if they get constipated or they get tummy things or they hurt in their intestines, because the most important neurotransmitters are actually created not in the brain, but in the intestines. And so uh, you may need to give your child something mm, that, that calms their intestines, that, that uh, a spectrobiotic of some kind that breeds the good bacteria in their intestines, or a little um, a peppermint oil mixed with a, a little olive oil, rub it on the tummy, for example, uh, or behind the neck. Uh, these things will help them to relax. But the most important thing is what they are learning from you. If you're sitting around talking about you know, the terrible state of the world, your children will be squeezing their stomachs and therefore their emotional energies, their mental energies that are uh, so tied into these neurotransmitters, uh, serotonin, L-dopa, uh, these, these kind of things that are made in the stomach that allow them to feel happiness. Uh, if you have a small child, grab them by the arms and swing around with them. As you spin and they spin, your anxiety will disappear and so will theirs. With children of all ages, exercise now really stimulates happiness and play. And this is what you can do to make sure that you balance their studies, balance the um, watching uh, uh, on their apparatus, their iPhones or, or TVs or whatever, uh, things that they're watching, and give them that chance to spin around. Interesting that we have a little, you hear that? Go. I think somebody, my, one of my foreleggers just fell. Let's just send light right now. His name is Messiah. Messiah, what color do you need from all of us to be well? Whatever color you get, imagine that you draw it from the cosmos down to the top of your head and send it out to Messiah. It's a beautiful four-legged Rhodesian Ridgeback who just hurt himself. Just send that color to him. Thank you. It makes a difference. See? He stopped. So that would be what I would suggest. Again, teaching your children to send light uh, out into the world 
uh, helps them to feel that, they, that they're not helpless, uh, that they have something to do. Children need action of all ages, especially teenagers. And so the more that you uh, direct that, you help them to use their physical bodies, the more peaceful and the more centered that they will be. And to always um, smile with them and say, everything will be fine. This is why we are all here. And it is true. Thank you. And the, another one. The last question is from Florida. Yes. Hi, Chris. I just saw a manatee in the wild for the first time, and my heart leapt with joy at the sight of this gentle, loving being. Will you please talk in knowings about what happens emotionally when we are near such positive examples of pure, soft, loving expression, and how we can carry this from the inside? Oh, uh, well... First, I have to tell a little story for myself about manatees. They are, as you describe them, these huge, huge beings that are so gentle, and you can feel the, the consciousness they have. One time I was in the water, in some muddy waters in Belize, and suddenly about a nine-foot huge male manatee stood up uh, on his whatever, stood up, and went forward and pressed his face and his lips, his big blubber lips, he pressed them right up against my face. And then he just held that for moments. It's like being touched by the gods. I, I think that all of us experience that when some animal, whether it's a domestic one or a wild one, uh, shows you love or acknowledges or recognizes you. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to experience. That's why animals are so healing for people around the world, because they, they uh, give us that love unconditionally. And manatees, for me, are the, the most exquisite example of that. How do you carry that inside? Again, having had that experience that you had of feeling this loving, gentle, pure being, just imagine that, you're, that it's touching you and that, that energy, its energy, enters you so that it transfers to you, transmits to you that same capacity to have and be a loving, gentle, wise, a pure being. It's within us all. And I love that you bring this up because it's so important at this time on the planet to pay attention to the Devic Kingdom, to the kingdom of nature, and to receive support from that kingdom as well. Because you having this experience as you tell that story, as you just told it to perhaps thousands of people who are listening right now to this meditation, to this knowing, they will all suddenly care about manatees. So you have given everyone a great gift. I send all of you my love and gentleness. Until next time.